Fashion is all about the very latest. Forget about last season, get rid of it, buy something new. Such an approach has led to Britain's great landfill concern. Vast mounds of discarded fashion is clogging it up and they're rapidly running out of space. So with the global anti-consumerism movement growing by the minute, retail sustainability advisor Steve Colmar joins us now live from Sydney. Good morning, Steve. Morning, Steve. Good morning. When it, Steve, when it comes to fashion, is the consumer really thinking in terms of sustainability it kind of flies in the face of fashion doesn't it i mean fashion's all about what's hip and now mm. and happening the newest latest it's always been about what is hip and now and latest and it's certainly been that case, been that way for about the last 50 years on a, on a progressively kind of accelerating basis uh, to what i kind of refer to as the era we live in is the era of conspicuous consumption and fashion and fashion retail has been leading the way with ever ever changing and constantly changing and evolving colour, shape, style, fabrics and finishes. Uh, and yet yeah, it's certainly been at the leading edge of what we've what, what I refer to as conspicuous consumption. Okay, well I can't imagine that designers and retailers are going to be terribly happy about us trying to perhaps encourage people to spend less or buy less. Yeah, I think the reality is that um, I, I refer to it as kind of the innovators, the first, the leaders of society, what I call the ruling class, have already started changing and they've been changing their shopping and buying habits now for about 10 years. And the likes of Al Gore, etc., have only made them think longer and harder about the things that they're buying and when they're buying and why they're buying. So all of us, or certainly the leading class and the early adopters, have been in the kind of environmental, better for the, better for the uh, land, better for the environment, thinking for quite a while. And all I'm suggesting is that that change is now filtering <coughs> through to the middle class and the rest of society. And so, uh, and so what are they demanding of, of, of fashion manufacturers, fashion designers, and, and, and are they responding? I, I think what we will demand, and without appearing to be a futurist, because I'm certainly no futurist, I mean, my life, my career has been around helping retailers think about what's going to happen next, and all I'm simply saying is that the consumer's uh, behaviour is now very heavily influenced by thinking about maybe not, maybe not buying as often, but generally buying better. So instead of jumping in and buying what the latest design is or the latest piece of fashion, maybe I'll just sit and think about that or I'll, or I'll buy something that's a little bit better made that will probably last a bit longer. Um, so, you know, and, and I think what we will see is that, look, we'll never change the youth of our nation. I mean, they'll always kind of want to make a statement and they'll yes. always want to be whatever's uh, trendy or latest or colour or whatever. That'll always be the way. Uh, but I think what will happen more in your, kind of, uh, uh, in your 30s and 40s, you'll just be a little bit more aware and maybe a little bit less ostentatious, a little bit less sort of superficial a little bit less garish in the, in the decisions that you make or the fashion that you wear or exhibit and, I, and maybe just think a little bit harder about what I'm buying and, um, and what the impact of that is going to mean on a sustainable society. But see, if I was a retailer, I would look at that and I would think that's going to mean, if I'm supporting this, that would me mean money. that people are going to spend less and therefore I'm going to lose money. How do you sell? How do you encourage the retailers to get on board? Uh, I think what I'm suggesting is that um, we will actually shop less, and we're already doing that. I mean, if nothing, what we've seen in the last two or three years is that the consumer is actually shopping less. But it doesn't mean that when they shop, they're spending less. In actual fact, we're, we're, uh, with the exception of food, because we're in the food category, we're actually shopping more and spending less, because we're, we're constantly thinking about fresh food. But once you move out of that and think about general merchandise categories, we're all kind of, in fact, we're almost trying to avoid, and we have been trying to avoid for the last year, a lot of those kind of fashion shops and department stores. And, um, but, you know, so we, we are actually shopping less. But when we do shop, 
we're kind of thinking more and we're not spending less. We're still spending at least as much, in some cases even more. And are we... Are we but um, we're just not going in there as constantly looking for that stimulation. And are we shopping... Uh uh, necessarily better are we in terms of fashion are we going uh, are we starting to look towards ethical uh, manufacture and sustainable manufacture how do we know that we're getting that David I always think well I guess my, my point before was the leading class or our, our, our innovators in, in society have been thinking in a more ethical yeah. manner for a number of years uh, and they made those decisions I don't know nine or ten years ago to be more kind of conscious in their consumption and the impact, because we, we live in a sophisticating society, each and every one of us, at all ages, at all demographics, are becoming increasingly more and more sophisticated with knowledge and information uh, passing through our society. So all of us kind of know more, all of us, all of us are aware more. There's not a, a, a child in society today, certainly over the age of kind of 14 or 15, who isn't aware of climate change or an impact of climate change or has an opinion on it. So all of our society is uh, a lot more aware of what's going on. And, and progressively, and this is really my, my point or my argument, is that all of us are being forced to consider that kind of, or reconsider that disposableness mm. that we've lived with for so long yep. and moving from that disposableness <clears throat> to maybe occasionally make a decision which is more about sustainability. Mm. Yeah. Now that might simply mean buying a better made garment, it might mean buying a better made car, it might mean buying a product that you think has been built with a longer life cycle. It, it is interesting, I mean I, I started putting this paper and this presentation together about a year ago and it started for me in the oddest of ways. This is the presentation actually, of the National Retail Forum, this, yes? The National Retail Forum presentation that I'm making next Tuesday started uh, about a year ago when I was actually in my garden. And I went out to turn the tap on and hose the garden and, and the actual fitting was plastic. And while I was hosing the garden, the plastic fitting broke. And I thought to myself, damn, wouldn't that have been so much better if that fitting had been brass yes. or had been better made? And then I was going to myself, hold on, I remember growing up and they were made of brass. That's right, yeah. yes. And when TVs and lasted. On, and it went from brass to cheaper metal, then it went from thick plastic, then it went to lightweight plastic. So everything kind of, everything in our society has been built to be disposed of. Yes. And all I'm saying, suggesting is that I think the consumer will gradually demand things to be better made. And I think this push away from constant low price and disposability will, will, will move back the other way. Uh, and I think it's one of the two major driving forces that are going on in retail. Mm. Uh, look, Steve, it's very, uh, very vital food for thought and a very interesting subject. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. After the break, the unlikely mix of aviation fuel and Bunsen burner, the man who takes the magic of science to the remotest kids in the country by plane, Figgles, the flying scientist, next.